Welcome to this WiseL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you how to create drop-down list parameters in Microsoft SQL Server Reporting Services. In this session we'll start by showing you how to create a basic drop-down list by typing in a list of values. We'll then show you how you can both filter and format a report using those drop-down list parameters. When we've covered that we'll move on and show you how you can use a data set to populate a drop-down list. We'll start by showing you how to understand the database structure to make sure you build the correct data sets in the first place, then how you can simply populate a drop-down list using the data set you've created, and also how you can allow multiple values in a drop-down list and still make sure that your filters will work. So let's get started. We've talked about using parameters to filter the results of a report in a previous video. The type of parameters we used relied on a user typing in either a number or a piece of text or selecting a date from a calendar. In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create drop-down lists for your parameters so that a user doesn't even have to guess what to type in. And we're going to start by providing a way for a user to select the name of a day of the week from a drop-down list and filter this table to show only the matching entries. To get started we need to go back to the design view and the first job is to add a parameter to the report. So from the report data window we can right click the parameters folder and choose to add one. I'm going to call the parameter weekday and I'm going to change the prompt to tell the user to choose a day from the list. The data type of this parameter will be text and what we're going to do in order to make sure the user can select from a specific list is to set the available values. This is the, uh, the annoying part in this particular example on the available values tab. I have to specify my values by adding each one, one by one, and in fact I have to type in the same value twice. There's a label field and a value field for each entry. The label is what's displayed to the user and the value is what's stored in the parameter. Now sometimes those two things can differ but in this case they're going to be the exact same thing. So if I carry on building these up, I won't build the whole list because it's quite boring for you to watch really isn't it? So I'll just add say three and once again Wednesday but that's enough to give you the idea. What I'm going to do now is choose OK and if I quickly preview my report, I haven't set up the filter yet I know, but if I preview the report we should be able to see that I get a drop-down list providing me with those three values. If I head back to the design view, the last step is to make sure that this, either the table or the data set is filtered based on the value that I've selected. So if I go back to the report data window, I can right click my film dates data set and choose dataset properties. On the dialog box I can select the filters tab and I can add a filter to check where the film day is equal to and I want to refer to the value stored in my parameter. So to do that I can click the FX button and from the parameters category double click on the parameter that I've just created. If I click OK and then click OK again. The next time I work in the preview of my report, I can select a day of the week, choose to view my report, and hopefully I'll return some results. As well as using drop-down lists to filter the results of a report, you can also use them to perform conditional formatting. So for the next example, we're going to create a drop-down list containing all of the month names. And whichever month we select from the drop-down list will, uh, we will highlight films released in that month in the table. So back to the design view, and I first of all need to add the parameter to the report data window. Right-click parameters and choose to add one. I'll call the parameters something nice and short, month, and in the prompt I'll tell a user to select a month. The data type will be text and then I can head to the available values tab and I can begin to specify my values by clicking the add button and laboriously 
typing them all in. And once you've completed typing in the full list, I've done that quite quickly there, you can choose OK on the dialog box and there's your parameter of month names. The next step is to apply a conditional format to the table that will highlight films with the matching month. To do that I'm going to click somewhere inside the table and then click on the row selector button over here at the left hand side. I can then use the properties window and find the background color property and from the drop down list that appears when I click on it I can choose the option called expression. In this box I'm going to use the if function to calculate whether a row should be filled in with a different color or not. I'm going to use equals I, I, F and open a set of round brackets. The logical test or the expression that I want to create is I'm going to check if the field um, film month is equal to the value of my parameter called month. If I then type in a comma I can go back to the list of constants and choose what color I'd like those films to appear this is this uh, pale purple color or plum and then if I type in another comma I can choose the color for all of the other rows I'll go with white if I close around brackets and then choose OK I've created my conditional format so to check that it works I simply need to preview the report and I can choose a day to uh, for films uh, to, to be displayed and then finally which month I would like my I would like films to be highlighted. Uh, let's go with May. So I view my report. I'll see all the films released on Wednesday, and highlight all the films released in May. So far, we've populated our drop-down lists by literally typing in the list of values we want to select from. But that can get a bit time-consuming, not to mention boring. So what we're going to do in this example is populate a drop-down list using the results of a data set. So the example is going to allow a user to select a director's name from a list and then our report will be filtered to show films made by the selected director. Now in order to understand this example properly it helps to know a little bit about the structure and the design of this database. So I'm going to go and have a look at the database diagram related to the film table and the director table. I'm showing this in SQL Server Management Studio. So you can see the director table has an ID field called director ID and that's got a relationship to the film table and the film director ID field. So what that means is that all the entries in the film director ID field in the film table are simply numbers that already exist in the director ID field in the director table. So here's a quick look at some of the data in the director table, Steven Spielberg's um, the director here and his ID is number four and if I look in the film table I can see that films that were made by Steven Spielberg such as Jurassic Park have the ID number of four in the film director ID field. And that's really useful information for when we start building our drop-down list and then applying the filter to this film table. So to create the drop-down list of director names we first of all need to build a data set which returns those values to the report. So we can do that back in the design view and in the report data window. We can see that we've already got a data set which populates our table of results and it includes, importantly, the film's director ID. Whenever you're populating a drop-down list with a data set, you will always need a separate data set to the one that populates your tables of results. So I'm going to right click the datasets folder and choose to add one and I'm going to call it DTS and Directors and I'm going to use an embedded dataset referring to my shared data source in DSC Movies and then I'm going to use the query designer to quickly build it. So the first thing I need to do is add in the table that I want to get my data from and I can do that by right clicking in the background and choosing to add a table. I'm only going to include the director table in this example. So I can double click and then close down the table uh, dialog box. There's two fields that I absolutely must include in this, uh, this data set. I want to be able to select from a list of director names. So if I want my user to be able to see that, I need to include that in the, uh, in the list. 
and I'm also going to include the direct ID. Now that's important because that's the field that I'm going to store in the drop down list and which will allow me to filter on my other data set, the one that populates my table of results. While I'm here, I'm going to sort my, uh, my fields, my directors in ascending order of name. And once I've done that, I can click OK and click OK again. And there's my data set created. So now that we've built the data set, we can create a parameter which is based on it. So to do that, I can right click the parameters folder and choose to add one. And I'm going to give the parameter a name of director ID because that's the value that's going to be stored in the parameter. But for the prompt, I'm going to ask my user to select a director name because that's what they're going to see in the drop down list. And it's very important that you choose the correct data type here. Even though my user is going to see a piece of text, which will be the director's name, what they're actually going to store is an integer, which is going to be the director's ID. To set the available values, then, I can head onto the available values tab. And instead of specifying values as I did earlier, I'm going to get my values from a query. And from there, I can choose which data set that I'd like to use. It's going to be DTS directors. And then there are two values to fill in, two drop down lists to select. The value field is what is stored in the parameter. So it's what the parameter remembers. So that's going to be the director's ID in this example. The label field is what the user will see when they're selecting items from the list. So that's got to be the director's name. Once I've set all that up, all I need to do is click OK. And finally, I need to apply a filter to my original data set using the values from that parameter. So I'll quickly do that by right clicking the data set and choosing data set properties. Head onto the filters tab and then choose to add one. I'm going to check where the film director ID field is equal to the value of my director ID parameter. The quickest way to do that is using the FX button, finding the parameters category and double clicking on the parameter that I've just created. I can then click OK and OK again and finally preview my report. When my parameter finally appears I should be able to select a director's name. Let's go with Steven Spielberg, because we know that Steven Spielberg has the ID number four. And when I view my report, I've got a list of films where the film director ID is the number four. So that's how that drop down list works. We can happily get rid of this column from the table. It's just in here for, the, for display purposes at the moment. But at the end result, we delete that column from the table to make a nice compact report. By default, drop down list parameters only allow you to select one entry at a time. So in my example, I'm only allowed to select a, a one director's name and see that one director's films. But it is possible to modify the drop down list to allow you to select multiple entries. There's actually one other thing that you'll also need to change. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate what that is. Head back to the design view first. And then to modify the parameter to allow more than one value, that's relatively straightforward. Back in the report data window, you can right click on the parameter that we've created and choose to view its properties. Then all I need to do is to check the box that says allow multiple values. If I tick the box, I can then click OK. And then when I preview my report, I should be able to see that I'm allowed now to select more than one entry by ticking the relevant boxes. The problem lies, however, in the way the filter on my table is set up. Once I've checked multiple boxes and click the view report button, my report will return an error because it can't resolve the filter that I've applied to my table. The problem here is that my drop down list now isn't returning a single value to my, uh, to my report. It's returning an array of, uh, of independent values. I need to modify my filter so that it can handle multiple values as well, rather than just a single value that was being returned before. So back to the design view. One more thing that I need to change. Back in the report data window, I'm going to right click on my data set that populates my table, 
and choose to view its properties. And on the Filters tab, it's a very simple change that I need to, need to make. Rather than asking for film director IDs that are equal to my parameter, I simply want to check if the film director ID is in the list of director IDs that's returned. So swap the equals operator for the in operator. If I then click OK and then preview my report one last time, this time I can select as many different boxes as I like and when I click the view report button I'll get a list of films for all of the directors that have been selected. Once we get to the stage of allowing multiple values in a drop-down list, it can be useful to include the label field as part of the result set as well, because at this point uh, the film director ID makes, makes no sense, it's meaningless virtually, unless you know your films quite well, you can probably work out that number 122 is Akira Kurosawa and the other ones as well. But what I'd really like to do is show the director's name in the table itself. So to do that I need to modify the data set which populates this table. So I'm going to go back to the design view and in the report data window I'm going to right click the data set and I'm going to jump straight into the query which uh, populates this data set. What I want to do is include the table which has the director's name in it. So I can right click into the background of the report, uh, sorry, the data set and choose to add a table and then I can double click on the director table. If I close then that window down I can see that as I showed you earlier on, the relationship that's built into the underlying database, Reporting Services recognizes that that relationship is still there. So I can simply check the director's name box and then click OK. All I need to do now is include the director's name field in my table. In fact, I'm going to swap out the director ID for the director name instead. And I'll just modify the title a little bit, Film Director. And when I preview my report now and choose, I'll choose the same three again and view my report, I'll see slightly more useful information in the output. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.